Good morning. As introduced, my name is Ji Won Chung from the NIFDS uh, Pre Submission Consultation Division. This is quite an early hours of the day, so it is my uh, pleasure and uh, happiness uh, to welcome you at this training. It has been about five years for uh, organizing this uh, training sessions, but because of the COVID 19 situation, we're not able to see you in person for some years. But this year, we again uh, get together offline so it's really good to see you in person at this venue i really appreciate your presence today i'd like to talk about the ich general introduction of ich and how the guidelines are developed in ich working groups and also the role of the uh, mfds in implementing the ich guidelines and uh the next presenter is Gabriella from the ICH. So Gabriella will delineate more on the ICH itself. So the next presentation will provide you more details about the ICH itself. So I will just deal with the overview of the ICH. So when it comes to ICH, I think you know quite well already. Some countries get together in 1990 to think about and formulate the guidelines for the pharmaceutical product regulation. And there has been the reform process from 2015. So other than three founding members, but also other member countries joined in the ICH, expanding the scope of the organization. If you look at the organizational chart of the ICH, as you can see here, the assembly is the main uh, body, and we also have the management committee, MC, and other working groups. If you look at the members, as you can see here, uh, the ICH has 20 members and 35 observers. Europe, Japan, and the U.S. started as the regulatory members, and EPA, Pharma, and JPMA were the founding members from the industry side. And then Health Canada and Swiss Medi were the standing members starting from the 1990. And with the 2015 reform, the regulatory members, 12 members were joined. Uh, joined and more industry members. And MFDS here, as you can see from the table, uh, is active as a regulatory member. And other than the members, there are 35 observers. IFPMA and WHO are the standing observers. And I talked about the working group assembly and also the management committee or MC. The management committee, MC, as you can see from the name itself, this organization deals with the administrative and operational part and also the financial part of the ICH. So MC is heavily involved in the operation of the ICH itself. So it includes the finding members and also from the 12 regulatory members, you can see five. Korea, Brazil, China are joining in the MC as the regulatory members and Bio, ICVA as the industry members, they are part of the MC. So the regulatory members are elected ones. I will talk about it in more detail later on. So for MFDS, it has been actively participating in ICH activity as you can see from the slide. The MFDS started to uh, actively participate in ICH 2007. It was kind of a uh, one of the representatives of the APAC. And from 2011, uh, we participate in the EWG or the expert working groups. After the reform in 2016, we became a regulatory member. And in 2018, uh, MFDS was elected as a member of the MC. So from 2018, and then there was a, another election in 2021, and MFDS was re-elected as the member of the MC. And as you know, from 12 to 17 of this month, in Songdo, Korea, ICH assembly will be held. 
So we have been actively involved in the ICH activities for 15 years, and I think the uh, hosting the ICH assembly in Korea signifies our active uh, contribution to the uh, ICH. I'm very happy to see that. Let me go over the ICH process for the guideline development. And as you know, there are six different categories for the uh, ICH guidelines. And expert working groups are the ones who lead the process. And there is also the type of the harmonization, which is called as a Q&A. After we have the uh, guidelines, if there are many questions, then there is a Q&A procedure. And IWG is leading that process. From step one to step five, I think you know a lot about the steps. But before that, before we go into the step one, there is so-called pre-step one phase. So new topics are identified and then more details of the activities before the step one were delineated here. So all the members and observers can submit the potential topic and the MC review the topics and then assembly can decide the development of the guideline on a certain topics. And the informal working group is formulated and this informal working group works on the business plan and the concept paper. So the once the informal working group produced these two documents, then the ICH assembly and implementation working group decide formally to develop a guideline on that topic. And if you look at the ICH website, then you will see the process, including concept paper for different topics. And this is a very well known process of guideline development from step one to step five. EWG is leading these steps, and as you can see from the slide, from step one, the technical document, the draft of the technical document is prepared by the working group, EWG. And at the step two, we have two sub-steps. For step 2A, the ICH assembly, the members of the ICH assembly decide whether they endorse the technical document or not, and in step to be the regulatory members of the ICH assembly uh, decide to endorse the draft guideline. And at the step three, there is a public consultation. So the, the comment and feedbacks from the public are collected and step four and five are the decision making steps. And this is the website of the ICH. I, I often visit the site and I think that you would enjoy benefit if you visit the ICH website frequently. So these are the topics from today till Friday. Uh, we will have been, will we be having training on this four categories, quality, safety, efficacy, and multidisciplinary guidelines. And the guideline topics are also falling into these four categories. And for the EWG activity, uh, if I go into a bit more detail, for the ICH working group as of October, there are 34 working groups, and this group include about 700 experts. So these experts and working groups are discussing on many different topics. And you can see that 58% of the experts in the working groups are from the founding and standing members, and about 30 or 29% of the experts are uh, joined, joined after the, uh, the renovation. So you can see that the founding and standing members are very active in the working groups. And MFDS currently are joined in 18 EWGs. And you know, EWG is really, really intensive. There are a lot of work to do. So every two to three weeks, the meetings are held to update the content and update what has been going on. So it's not an easy job to do. So uh, from 2011, we participated in the EWGs. And so far, we believe that we have joined about 30 groups. So currently, we are working in the 18 EWGs. And you can see here different names of the working groups where the MFDS is currently participating. There are some guidelines like Q3C impurities or for the biological development, viral safety development, virus validation, Q5A, and quality management for S. We are participating in uh, three as rela safety related guidelines, EWG, adaptive clinical trials, and 
for the multidisciplinary, and for Q is under revision. So we are participating in that EWG too. So there are many different guidelines that you find to be interesting. So what kind of activities that we are doing for the implementation of the ICH guidelines in Korea from 2018 till now, maybe 2017 till now, we reflected the ICH guidelines into the Korean regulatory guidelines. About 105 guidelines were reflecting the ICH uh, guidelines. So from the last year's figure, that was like one and 101. So we have been four guidelines increased, which reflect the ICH guidelines into Korean regulations. So if you look at the quality sector, we have 46 quality-related guidelines, and out of them, 44 are implemented. And Q12, life cycle management, we are discussing it. So the guideline itself is being under the revision process. So it's in the process of implementation. For S1B, rodent carcinogenicity studies, for the safety sector, it's not yet implemented in Korea, but we are thinking about it. So about 90% of the safety-related guidelines of ICH are implemented in Korea. For efficacy, out of 31, 28 efficacy-related guidelines are implemented in Korea. E14 is not yet uh, implemented in Korea. For multidisciplinary guidelines, out of 17, 16 guidelines are implemented, M8 and M10. We are in the process of implementation. So this is the list of the uh, guidelines that are not yet implemented in Korea. And if you visit the MFDS website or NIFDS website, you can find uh, a lot of information what the Korean uh, regulatory body is doing uh, for the ICH implementation, guideline implementation. So you can see that what kind of activities that we are doing in relation to the ICH. And you can also find the English and Korean version of the ICH guidelines. And the expert working groups where the MFDS is participating, you can also find some information about those EWG activities. So you can follow up on uh, what MFDS is doing in the uh, ICH guideline area. The next face-to-face -face meeting, as I said, from 12 to 17, not 16, from, uh, from 12 to 17 November this year, there will be a ICH uh, Congress or the Assembly, and IPRP, meaning that the regulatory members of the ICH are gathered in separate, and uh, the meeting is also held in 16 and 17 of November in Incheon. So as a summary, MFDS believes that the cooperation with the ICH is very significant. And I think you can understand why. The, the regulatory competence of Korea need to be well aligned with the global competence. And that's what we, why we are cooperating with the international cooperation with the ICH. And by doing so, we can provide a safe and if, if, uh, effective and uh, drugs and products to the patients, and also we can help the industry to develop further. So starting from today till the Friday of this week, the ICH training, the guideline training, would be a very good opportunity for you to share the knowledge. And on the 11th of this month, as I said, the ICH assembly will be held starting from 12. So. The expert group leaders will come here and share the guidelines and the progress of the specific guidelines. So that is called as the ICH special session, which will be held on Friday. So if you have any questions, you that would be a great opportunity for you to share your questions with the experts.